the Bible says that homosexuality is a sin. That's what Christians want you to believe. It's what they've been saying for years. It may even be what you've said at one point, or it may be something that you still believe. I want to suggest to you today that the very statement homosexuality is a sin or being LGBTQ is a sin illustrates the very problem with this position. You see, we understand that sexuality is a vast and complex idea. It involves gender identity and sexual orientation and sexual activity. So the, the way I see myself and the way the people I'm attracted to, the places I seek intimacy, and then the tangible physical expression of those things. So that complex idea of sexuality can't be contained in a word or a phrase or a verse of the Bible. And it's really intellectually dishonest when we try to claim that the Bible addresses this because it simply doesn't. Now, people who want to use the Bible to justify discrimination will throw out four or five verses, the ones that you're familiar with. But the problem is, if they're really being honest, those verses never say what they want those verses to say. I'm a Christian pastor. I've been a pastor for 27 years. I've studied the Bible. I've read it extensively. I've given hundreds of sermons and led hundreds of Bible studies, and I can be honest about what the Bible is. The Bible is not a book. It's a library of books. It's 66 separate books written thousands of years ago, collected over hundreds of years, written by dozens of different authors, some whose names we know and some we don't. And those words were originally oral tradition before they were written down often. And when they were written down, they were written down in several different languages and they've been revised and edited over thousands of years. The Bible is a record of a particular group of people at a specific place and time in the history of the planet trying to document their lives and answer the big questions of life and to describe the world around them with the knowledge and the information that they had available. If we understand that, then it's really irresponsible to take a handful of words written by someone we've never met thousands of years ago and use that as a basis upon which to discriminate and perpetuate prejudice against people. Look at it this way. Let's say you have open heart surgery scheduled and on the day of the procedure you go into the hospital and you see your surgeon there reading from a 6,000 year old medical journal. Well, you might get a little nervous. You'd probably run out because you want someone, if they're going to work on your body, you want them to have the latest information. You don't want them going back 6,000 years and trying to rely on the information available at the time. Well, using the Bible to address sexuality is no different. We simply know more than we knew then. I always think it's funny that people who want to use the Bible to justify their prejudices and fears and phobias will go to the creation story in Genesis, the one that you're probably familiar with. And they'll say, John, it says right here, God created Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. They'll actually say this. But those same people will never preach the validity of talking serpents. Talking serpents are in that story too, but they dismiss that idea out of hand. They never mention that. But gender and sexuality, they'll use a few lines from this 6,000-year-old poem and they'll make that the basis upon which they mistreat people who are supposedly made in the image of God. I don't think that's responsible. I think people of faith and morality and conscience need to be honest about what the Bible is and what it actually says. We see the fruit of this irresponsible teaching everywhere. We see that it pushes people to the periphery of spiritual community. We see that it fractures families. We see that it's responsible for the much higher rate of depression and self-harm and suicide attempts among LGBTQ teenagers. We see that conversion therapy, the idea that you could actually pray away your gender identity and sexual orientation, we see how prevalent it still is and how much damage it's doing to people. And it really needs to stop. If we really want to emulate Jesus in the world, we need to be about compassion and about empathy about sitting with people and hearing their stories, about seeing their inherent beauty. Because the truth is, never in the Gospels does Jesus condemn or reprimand anyone for their gender identity or sexual orientation. So if we really want to be like Jesus, we need to stop persecuting people for who they are and how they love. If you're an LGBTQ person and you have been on the receiving end of hateful people claiming to be speaking for a God who is supposedly love, I want to apologize to you. Your mistreatment represents these people's fear and prejudice and hatred, not God's. God sees you, God made you, and God adores you. 
And if you're a Christian who's still holding on to the idea that the Bible says being gay is a sin or being LGBTQ is a sin, I want to suggest that you do some work, that you really dig deeper into the verses and really understand what the Bible is saying and be willing to change your mind about what you always believe those verses said. Because if we read the Bible for what it is and what it says, no, the Bible doesn't say that being LGBTQ is a sin. Christians need to stop saying it because it's reckless and it's irresponsible and it's killing people.